Hey guys, welcome to Jobber Tech Channel. In today's video, let's explore the state notifier subclass and the state notifier provider from the Riverpath package. Have you ever encountered a situation where you're displaying a list of objects? Let's say a list of strings to keep it simple. And when you try to update the list, you found yourself having to convert your widget to a stateful widget and call set state to rebuild your screen and reflect those changes? This can be a lot of tedious work, right? Especially when your list is displayed across different screens and widgets. How can you update your list and have those changes reflected everywhere it's displayed? It's a tough problem to solve, isn't it? Thanks to the power of Riverpulse State Notifier Provider, it's here to save the day. So what exactly is the state notifier provider? What are the problem it solves? And how do we use it? That is what we'll dive into this video. So here, we are at the official docs of the state notifier provider. And as the docs mentioned, this provider is ideal for managing state that may change in reaction to user interactions and it typically exposes an immutable state that can be changed, helping to centralize or isolate the logic to make our code base maintainable and scalable. But if you're managing a simple object like string, int, or boolean, state provider is the provider for that to make your life easier. The advantages of using state notifier provider is it slashes boilerplate since you don't need to convert your widget into a stateful widget when you're aiming to update your list. Plus it isolates your logic, making it testable independently of the UI. This improves readability and scalability. It's like having a clean well-organized desk. So to better understand, let's see how this works in action. I have here a list of rows displayed in a list view that builder. Now, if we want to add or remove something from this list, we typically need to convert our widget to stateful widget and call set state. And as you can see, this list is also displayed here on our home screen. So it's a real puzzle figuring out how to update the list in our home screen because it's in a completely different widget. That's where the state notifier provider steps in to simplify the process. The first thing we need to do is to create a fruit controller class that extends state notifier. And give it a type of list string because our list of fruits is of type list string. And take note that state notifier needs a default value. So let's copy our list of fruits and assign it to our super constructor as its default value. So inside this class, let's create the method to add and remove items. So here in the add item method, what we are doing here is creating a copy of the state of our controller, adding the item that is being passed from the constructor, and then assigning to our state. Take note that we cannot directly modify the state here, because according to the state notifier definition, it says that an observable class 
that stores a single immutable state. The state that this definition refers to is the data that is a state notifier holds. This state is what your UI will rebuild in response to when it changes. So if you're dealing with mutable state or object, then what you need to use is the change notifier provider. However, change notifier provider is rarely used because of some drawbacks. And if you're curious about its drawback, then simply head over to the change notifier provider docs because it explains everything. And here in the remove item method, we are looping over our state or the list of items and adding to a list if the item is not the removed item, then assigning it to our state back again. So that's all for our fruit controller class. But remember that you can add more functions that you need here, like delete all method, insert item, remove duplicates, and more. You have the full control. Then the next thing we need to do is to create the provider for this, which we can watch from our UI. Take note that this state notifier provider requires two types parameters. The class that you want to watch. So in our case, is the fruit controller and the type of the state notifier. So in our case, is the list of string and then return the fruit controller class. That's it guys. If you found this hard to digest, then don't worry. Just practice doing it over and over again, and you'll understand well later, and it becomes natural. Like you are just sipping your favorite coffee every morning. So the next thing we need to do is to use our provider in our UI to display the list of fruits. To be able to watch any provider inside our UI, we need the widget ref object. And to make the widget ref object available, we need to convert our stateless widget into consumer widget. Okay, there you go. It's correctly displaying the list of fruits now. So let's try to add and remove item to see if the method we created are working and see if the provider really updates the UI as claimed by the official docs. Down here at the onPress function of our add button, let's tap on the add item method of our provider. And right here, let's also tap on the remove item method to see if it works as expected. Let's test this out. There you go. It works as expected. As you can see, our UI updates without the need to mess up the code of our UI. It's clean and neat. That's all for today guys. If you found this video helpful, please show your support with a like, share, and subscribe to our channel.